In this presentation, we will put together financial statements related to an enterprise fund, recalling that there are different types of funds, three categories of funds, governmental funds, proprietary funds, fiduciary funds, the governmental funds being the largest category of funds, those being on a modified accrual basis as opposed to a normal accrual basis, the enterprise fund, the one we're working on here, part of the proprietary funds. Proprietary funds being similar to for-profit type of organizations in that we could think of them basically having types of customers in a way and also being on a normal accrual basis. So the enterprise fund we're looking at here on a normal type of accrual basis. Recall that the enterprise fund means that it typically has customers outside of just simply government as the only customers of the proprietary enterprise fund as opposed to the other proprietary in, uh, fund, the pr other proprietary fund being the internal service fund and internal service fund having customers, but them all being internal to the organization. So we are on an enterprise fund, accrual basis, and we're thinking about a fund that has customers, proprietary type of fund, financial statements. We're going to have the information on the left-hand side. Assets are going to be in green in our trial balance, liabilities in orange. The light blue is what would be the equity section in a for-profit type of organization. It's going to be the net position here. Below that, in the dark blue, we have the what would be income statement in a for-profit type of organization, those temporary accounts temporary accounts which would typically close out to what would be the equity section and here of course closing out to the net position this is going to be in balance the debits minus the credits equaling zero showing that it is in balance with regards to a debit and credit double entry accounting format we of course are going to take that format convert it to a financial statement type format using more of an accounting equation type of format assets equal liabilities plus equity or assets equal liabilities plus the fund balance here or the net position here or in other words as it's minus liabilities equals net position we have the first statement we will be working with the statement of revenues expenses and changes in fund net position in essence similar to the income statement so we're going to start off with a statement similar to an income statement that's probably what i'm going to refer to it most of the time as the statement similar to an income statement because it's shorter to say that than statement of revenues expenses and changes in fund net position as you look at this title however note that we could tell that it's going to be an accrual based statement as opposed to a modified accrual statement by the term expenses so clearly anytime you see something that says revenue and expenses or expenditures we're thinking oh that's an income statement type of account timing type of account activity over a beginning and an ending time period anytime we see expenses as opposed to expenditures Governmental accounting, we're typically thinking, okay, that's going to be a accrual type basis system as opposed to a modified accrual type system. We're going to go straight down these items down below in the dark blue area. We'll start off with the sales. So we're going to say operating income colon. We'll then bring in the sales. So we're going to pick up all these items. This is a credit represented by the brackets down here. It's going to be a positive number, of course, up top because we're in a plus and minus format. Note the name of the revenue account sales as it would be typically in a for-profit type of organization that sells something like merchandise. So it's very similar to a for-profit in that way. Even the terminology of the sales line, uh, the revenue line being sales, being much the same. Then we have the operating expenses. And you might say, well, wait, wait, what happened to the interest? What happened to the capital grant here? Those are other types of increases in what we would think of as basically the net income type of uh, account or calculation. However, these two items are not part of normal operations. We're thinking of the enterprise fund as if it's basically it's going to sustain itself in essence through normal operations. And so we're dealing first with those normal operations items. And that would be the sales minus the normal expenses. Normal expenses, including the management and admin expense. That's the 341, 874. The maintenance and distribution. That's the 657, 474. The treatment plant. That's going to be the 658, 294. The uh, uncollectible accounts. The 305, 890. Oh, that's the 15, uh, 343. Then we have the uh, depreciation of the 613 432 and the total operating expenses then summed up to the outer column 
Notice the item here that we skipped, of course, being the interest expense and the similar kind of reasoning is happening here. The interest expense is going to be something that isn't part of a normal operations because we don't, it's a loan. So we're going to bring that out outside. We're going to have the normal operating activities, revenue minus expenses, and then bring up the non-normal type of activity. Also note that the expenses, of course, are brought into the inner column subcategory. Then we're going to bring the subtotal out to the outer column as we have done here with the 2286000 417 then we take the sales of minus the uh, operating expenses to get the operating income that of 952 151 then we have the non-operating revenue and expenses this is where we're going to pick up the interest income non-operating it's going to not be part of the normal operations similar to a for-profit organization as well as the interest expenses these are things that we wouldn't have the expense of course if we didn't need the financing therefore not part of normal operations we wouldn't have the uh, interest income if it weren't for the investments that were made. And note that this isn't a company that's in the business of making investments. The normal operation of the company isn't, in, in essence, an investment firm. So then we're, if we sum those two up, we're going to say that uh, the expense is greater than the income. So we're going to subtract these two out. We're at one nine, uh, one one nine eight ninety nine, basically an expense uh, winning or over the income. Then we have income before transfers and contributions, which of course is going to be the operating income where we left off prior to this section, minus the expenses here, the net of the expenses being higher than the revenue, that giving us the income before uh, transfers and contributions. Then we have the interfund transfer out. So the interfund transfer out being the uh, 817 580. That, of course, is money that's going somewhere else to another fund, typically. So it's going to be internal going to some other fund, not part of normal operations. It's not going to be expense that we would that we would put up top, but it's going to be a decrease in what we would consider basically flow type of accounts, temporary type of accounts, and therefore we're going to put it down here, down below. Then we have the capital contributions, the, eight, the 486, 420, and that's going to be this item. That's going to be the grant that came in. That's money that, that increased acting like sales, not part of normal operations, however, because it's a grant money, not part of the normal enterprise fund type operations. So therefore, we're going to put it down below rather than up top. Then we're going to, we're going to say that the change in net position is where we were at before, the income before transfers and contributions, the interfund transfer out minus, and then the capital contributions plus that gives us the change in net positions, the 501.92. That, of course, matches our bottom line here. If we were to add up basically credits minus the debits of these dark blue or income statement type numbers, then we're going to tie this out to the net position uh, section, which is going to be like the equity section. We're basically tying it out to the section on the what would be similar to the balance sheet statement. And we'll do that by saying, what's the beginning net position? It's going to be this 3,174,94 plus the 2,052,960. Let's add those up. We've got the 3,175,094 plus the 2,052,960. And that gives us the 5,228,054. That's the beginning balance. You can think of that similar to retained earnings for a corporation, similar to a capital account for a sole proprietorship. Then we, we closed out, of course, what would be similar to the net income for, for a for-profit organization to it. And that's going to give us the ending balance. And you can think of the ending balance as, in essence, being the sum of all blue items, the credits minus the debits, that at $5,729,146. Then we're going to go to the statement of net position. The statement of net position being similar, of course, to the balance sheet type statement. We'll go through this balance sheet type statement from top to bottom where we have the assets and then the liabilities and then the net position starting off with the assets. First asset being current assets, noting that we do have current assets and long term assets because we are using basically an accrual method or we are using an accrual method as opposed to a modified accrual used by other funds such as the largest group of funds, the governmental funds here enterprise fund proprietary fund therefore normal basically accrual basis therefore we do have breaking out short-term and long-term assets within the short-term assets we're going to have the cash we're going to have the accounts receivable we, we recorded it net 
meaning we're going to say accounts receivable minus the uh, accumulated provision, which is like the allowance for accounts receivable. Then we have the accrued utilities. Then we have the uh, due from the general fund and the interest receivable. Summing those items up, we're going to get to the total current assets, three million and one uh, twenty-eight. Then we have uh, the restricted assets, and we have the restricted asset here of cash. So we have a restricted asset of cash, that being ten thousand six seventy-four of the restricted asset. Then we have the capital assets, capital assets, land. These are going to be the like property, plant, and equipment type assets, and we're just scrolling straight down here. So now we're at the land. We are at the building. We recorded the building net, which is going to be the building minus the related uh, depreciation or accumulated depreciation. Then we have the machinery and equipment recorded net, which is machinery and equipment minus the accumulated depreciation. Then we have the total capital assets, which of course is summing up the land, the building net, the machinery and equipment net, that giving us the total capital assets. And then our total assets are going to be the outside column. So we got the total current assets. We've got the restricted assets. We've got the total capital assets. That gives us total assets. Now we're going to go to the liabilities. We're going to start this in a new tab so that we have enough room that we can have it big enough so that we can see this. Liabilities and then the net position. So the liabilities are going to be current long term. Once again, breaking out between current and long term because we're using an accrual basis as opposed to a modified accrual basis. Then we're just going to list out our liabilities changing from a debit and credit format to a plus and minus format we have the accounts payable we have the interest payable we have the current portion long-term debt and then we have the total current liabilities total current liabilities summing those items up 1,274,832 then we have liabilities payable from restricted assets and that's going to include of course the customer deposit this item here the 10,674 and then we have the long-term liabilities, long-term liabilities being the uh, revenue bond payable. So the bond payable be the long-term. That then provides us with the total liabilities, which is the total current liabilities, the customer uh, deposit, which is the liability payable from restricted assets, and then the long-term liability, giving us the total liabilities. Next, net position. Net position is going to be broken out between the net investment and capital assets and the net uh, position unrestricted for a total net position. So we can think about that, you know, this way we can think, okay, the net position total is, we could think of it as the beginning balance here that we worked on in, in the statement, uh, in like the income statement type of statement, plus the activity that was closed out to it. So we can, we already worked out the ending balance, the net position ending balance when we looked at the income statement like statement. Now, uh, we can also think of it as, of course, if we added up all the equity section here, we could say that we have a credit of the 3175094 plus the 2052960 plus the 3288568 plus the 185995 plus the 486420 minus the 341874 minus the 657474 minus the 658294 minus the 305. 305 uh, 894 minus the 613432 minus the 15343 minus the 817580. And that would give us the total 5729146. So that's, and we could also do the same thing of saying assets minus liabilities would give us that total. Now, once we get to the total, we could then think about the breakout between the net investment and capital assets and the net position unrestricted. And so we have it here broken out. This is the beginning balances. And we'd have to then take a look at the activity that happened over the certain time period in order to properly allocate between the net investment and, and the capital assets and the, net, and the net position of this basically what would be similar to the net income amount that's being closed out into these two items to get to this basically ending balance and that's going to have to do with of course the items that are going to be related to the capital assets and financing of it like the land building accumulated depreciation machinery equipment and the accumulated depreciation our goal there is to be able to tell the reader hey look this number in terms of the uh, net position represents assets minus liabilities but some of these are basically used up or being consumed 
within long-term assets and the financing of them. And therefore, uh, this net position that we're looking at here may not be something that uh, it can be used. So we want to break out the assets minus the liabilities, the net position, in terms of, of the net investment in capital assets, that stuff that's probably locked up, can't be doing anything with that to, to anytime soon. And then the net position unrestricted, the stuff that people possibly can start to plan for and think about what they want to do with it. So here's going to be the uh, overall numbers. Here's going to be the statement of net position with all put together. We've got the assets, liabilities, and the net position. And of course, if we think about the accounting equation, we can take the assets of the 18494652. That seems like too many numbers. We could say the 18494652 minus the liabilities, 12765506. And that gives us the equity. Or we can take the liabilities of the 12765506 plus the net position, uh, the net position, not the equity, similar to the equity, 5729146. And that's going to give us the total assets, of course. And then if we think about our net position bottom line here, uh, the 5729146, that is what is going to tie out to the similar to the income statement, statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balance. So we see that this number here uh, is going to tie out to this number here on the statement of net position.